Is this the right room? Unfortunately, huh? what I don't know anything about is Russian ice skating <laughs> or pretty, pretty boys ice skating together. But I know someone who does, and his name is Josh Greeley, if you want to give him a round of applause. Hey! We're filming live right now. Everybody say hello to Unlocked. <laughs> awesome. I'm a sexy pork cutlet, both femme fatale that enthralls men. There's a, oh my god, there's a little plushy Yuri in the back. Oh, look, look at him, look at him, it's his fat head. Oh my god, we got Victor. <laughs> and we have Russia. Together, they make Russia squared. They're reminding me of other roles I've done. Lithuania in Italia. Uh, <laughs> yes, come to my country. You know, it's really funny, actually, and I was telling some, like, I was telling somebody earlier, um, the fact that I got to play Lithuania and you know he's you know kind of under Russia's boot heels and in in in, in Italia. but then uh, and who was voiced also by Jerry Jewell who plays Victor uh, <laughs> who is also Russian and instead of and I'm again under his boot heels but in a very different way the speech the arm and speech thank you for not asking for the arm and scream <laughs> yes cuz that's not happening <laughs> a soldier and I have dedicated my heart to the restoration of humanity sir nothing could make me prouder than dying for such a noble cause if we use his titan ability with the manpower we have left I believe we can do it we can retake this city for humanity's glory and what little time I have left to live I will advocate his strategic value I think the most I ever spent on one line for Inte Eastland I think we did like 20 some odd takes I remember some of these lines by heart now, so the fact that I can now, three or four years later, since we recorded the show, I can come up to you and be like, Tife Zamums, repeat in the Isla Patupam's Palor, Roof Bot Fix. And stuff like that. So yeah, it's, uh, it was difficult, but once we got it down, it felt really freaking cool. After the whole scene where Yuri is pressing down on Victor's hair, he's like, it's thinning. It's like, no, 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 it's very thick and shiny. Um, like, after that, people, like, somebody on Tumblr, like, did this whole thread about how his hair's getting shorter, he has cancer, Victor's gonna die. <laughs> and, and, like, and then we actually started thinking, they wouldn't do that, would they? Like, they're not gonna kill Victor off, right? 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 Like, like, it just, it got, uh, like, we, we got into it. We were in love with that show. Uh, at, like, for the first, like, by the, when I'm going into the booth, I didn't even know that I was playing Yuri until the day I stepped into the booth to record the first episode. Uh, we, we got, I got a call from my agent. I was in a Barnes & Noble with my wife. We were looking for the latest volume of Princess Jellyfish manga. And uh, I get this call from my agent. It's like, hey, can, can you come in on Monday from 6 to 10 for Yuri on Ice? And I just remember going, that's that stating show. <laughs> Yeah, I could totally do that. Do you know who I'm playing? Nope. Click. <laughs> ah! and, and then the fact that we had actual professional ice skaters finding this show and, and like latching onto it and loving it. Uh, John, Johnny Weir, uh, who, you know, huge in the skating community and has been, uh, and also I think works for MSNBC as one of their sports correspondents. Uh, you know, he found the show, and all of a sudden, his tweet, his Twitter was just nothing but "Oh my God, I love this show!" and tweeting different pictures and stuff. And because he works for MSNBC, you know, his his tweets and stuff are automatically forwarded to MSNBC's sports page. So for like a week straight, Victor's naked ass was all over MSNBC. <laughs> like it was just, it's like, is this real life? A Yuri and Free crossover. Exactly. It's like, First we'll swim, then we'll freeze the pool, and then things get really hot. Like, <laughs> uh, half pool, half block of ice. The question is, what do I think Toyohisa from Drifters does with the heads he cuts off? Uh, that's a personal matter, and I don't think Toyohisa would appreciate you trying to delve into his private life. Um, I don't know, maybe he takes him to... He what? He buries, he buries them apparently. There you go. He makes saltpeter with them. Ask her. She knows. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> like, say that again. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Nice. 
There's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> so your question, ma'am, yes. Um, what's been your favorite anime to do, not just for the character, but like everybody else that you've worked with for the anime? Pick a favorite child, Josh. Uh, <laughs> it's Timmy. He brings me cookies. Um, favorite show that I've worked on, not just as, just for my character, but everybody, like the ensemble. Uh, Normally, when we record shows, like you know, we'll find a way, no matter how gory or gruesome they are, we'll find a way to have fun. But Titan was just such a different sh like style of show. Um, we like we had fun, but like we we never really lost. Like we would, we didn't do like outtakes or we didn't like cut up in the booth or anything like that. We were pretty like we were on point the whole time, and so like after three or four months of recording that, then, then getting to do junior high and let all of that pent up like need to just do something silly and goofy out was wonderful. And we had a, a great time with that. We go in and we record when we're recording. If another actor has not, if we're having another scene, a scene with another actor and that actor has not come in to record yet, instead of re we'll record the, you know, the dialogue that's written on the script, but then we'll also record something extra, usually that fits the mouth movements that's completely out of character, usually completely profane. Uh, uh, and, um, and then they come in, and when they're about to do their line, they hear the bomb, and then they have to try and do their line without laughing. Did you see that drift? Yes, that was a good drift. Did you see that drift? Yes, it was a good drift. Each of keys in the back here going, cars are cool! It was at the end of my session, this was the last line I was going to record before I ended, and then Jeremy was coming in. And this was going to be the first thing that she saw. So I was like, can I leave something for her? I was like, yeah, go ahead. And instead of hearing these li those lines, this is what she hears. Hey, Jeremy! Huh? Does this remind you of anything? Um... <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> oh, yeah! Yes. She apparently could, she fell out of the booth and they couldn't record for 10 minutes because they had to just... <laughs> That's my favorite bomb ever. That's my favorite funny story ever from recording. Then yes, I have seen it, and my reaction was, Yurio, put a shirt on. Uh, and Odebeck, he's, Odebeck, he's 15. What? <laughs> Stop it. Legal in a year? Where? I would like to see them focus more on pair skating. Like I said, of individual stuff, I like because especially after Victor and Yuri's pair skate at the you know during the the credits of that last episode, which oh my god, if you have not looked up the translation of the of the lyrics to that song, look it up. I know I don't I can't speak for the you know the intention of the creators about whether or not the Yuri and Victor are actually a thing, but as a fan of the show and after listening to that song, I freaking ship it, and I think. <laughs> Like, after that song, just like, that's the, they're a thing. I mean, come on, they have to be. I hope they are. I hope they really are a thing. We don't know if they actually kissed, which I think they did. I feel like even though officially we have no, like, I can't speak for the creators. I don't know, you know, if, if they intended for it to be a show that was really important for the LGBTQ community, but it is. Uh, th there is... It, is, it has made so many people feel validated, and it has made, uh, it, I've had people come up to me crying at conventions about because that show made them feel comfortable to come out to their parents. Or uh, it, it, it made them feel comfortable to, to be themselves. And that is, I think, the greatest gift that any show or, or, or any form of entertainment or art can give to somebody else. And the fact that I get to be a part of that is humbling beyond words. And I, I hope that we continue to see more shows of that caliber in the future.